This question says, find the power that is absorbed or supplied by the elements. So when we look at our circuit diagram now, we're going to have elements that are in series and elements that are in parallel. So it is very important that we have a good understanding of elements that are in series and elements that are in parallel. To start analyzing the circuit, I'm going to start at the left hand side. So we have a current that's flowing this way. The current is going to be Ix which equals to 4 amps. So 4 amps of current is flowing this way. Once it reaches this point right here, let me label it in red. The current has two options now. The current can flow this way or the current can flow that way. Therefore, once the current splits, it has two different options. Therefore, the 4 amps that was on this side will no longer be 4 amps through these elements. Now, it's important for us to always remember that if you have something in series, the current will be the same. So we can say that these two elements are in series and these two elements are in series. All right, so let's start to calculate the power in each element. We're going to start with the 36 volt source. So we're going to write power in the 36 volt source equals current times voltage. The current in this particular element is going to be 4 amps. But as we can see, the current is going to flow this way, right? And it's going to go through the negative terminal to the positive terminal, which means it's going to be a voltage rise. And because the current enters the negative terminal, we're going to assume that it is a negative current. We're going to have negative 4 amps multiply by 36 volts. When you solve for this, you're going to get negative 144 watts. So that's going to be the power in the 36 volt source. And remember, because it's a negative power, it's being delivered. Or you can say supplied. Okay, now for box 1, I'm just going to write P1. The power is IV. We know the current is 4 amps, which is Ix, and it's going to flow through the positive terminal of this element. So we're going to have a positive current, which is 4, positive 4, and the voltage is 12 volts. Therefore, the power flowing through box 1 is going to be 48 watt. And we know because it's a positive power, it's going to be absorbing power. Okay, let's do element 2 or box 2. We have the power equals current times voltage. The power equals the current in this element we know is going to be 2 amps and we know it's going to flow from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Therefore, we're going to have a positive current and the voltage is 24 volts. When we solve for this now, the power equals 48 watt and this element is going to be absorbing power. Okay, we have two more elements. Let's do this current dependent voltage source. The power equals IV. The current in this particular element is going to be 2 amps because we know these two elements are in series, right? And because 2 amps is going to enter through the negative side of the terminal, for this source, we're just going to assume it is a negative current. So we're going to say negative 2. And the voltage for this particular situation is 1Ix. So we have 1I. X. Now the thing is we have this dependent variable Ix. Do we know what Ix is? Well sometimes we're going to have to calculate it and sometimes they're going to give it to us. In this particular situation we look at our circuit diagram and we see they give us Ix. Ix equals to 4 amps. So once we know this information we're just going to plug in 4 for Ix. Therefore we can now simplify this equation to be negative 2, 1 times 4. Remember, Ix equals 4 amps. So 
So when we solve for this now, we have negative 2 times 4. So the power in this source is going to be negative 8 watt. This is the power in the current, current controlled voltage source. And because it's a negative power, we're going to say this is delivered. Okay, we have one more element, which is going to be element 3. We can write this as the power in element 3 equals IV. The current flowing through this element is going to be 2 amps, and it's positive because it flows through the positive terminal. So we have 2, and the voltage is 28 volts. So when you solve for this now, this is going to give you 56 watt. And because it's a positive power, we know this is going to be absorbing. So the power in element 3 is going to be 56 watts. Alright, so let's just use Telegin's theorem to prove this holds true. Remember, the power absorbed must equal to the power delivered. So the power absorbed is going to be 48 watts plus 48 watts plus 56 watts. So we have P1 plus P2 plus P3 equals the power delivered, which is going to be the two sources, the 36 volt source and the current controlled voltage source. So we have P36 plus P1IX. Now the power for element 1, 2, and 3 is 48, 48, and 56 for element 3. So we have 48 watt plus 48 watt plus 56 watt equals. So the power in the 36 volt source is going to be 144 watts. Plus the power in the current control voltage source is going to be 8 watts. And yes, even though it's negative, the negative sign just implies that it's being delivered. But when I'm doing it this way, I'm just going to use the magnitude. So we have 48 plus 48 plus 56. When you put that in the calculator, that's going to give you 152. Which means there's 152 watt of power being absorbed. And 144 plus 8, it's also going to give you 152 watts, which means there is 152 watts of power being delivered. Therefore, Telegin's theorem holds true. So this is how we were able to solve for the power in each element of this circuit.